we're back with one more down. Uh, today we have uh, number 12, Jim Fox, uh, multi-sport athlete, uh, Struthers Hall of Fame inductee. Uh, this guy was a tremendous quarterback, uh, competitor, uh, outstanding basketball player, uh, formidable football player, uh, track guy, baseball guy. You know, it's a throwback to uh, – those earlier years where guys didn't specialize and you, you know, get out there with your friends and the people that you grew up with and just tried everything to represent your community and your school. Um, I'm excited to have you on here today, Jim. Uh, it's a pleasure of mine. So I look forward to this conversation that we're about to have, uh, you know, rehashing those early nineties uh, on the grid and, uh, Struthers, Ohio, and Youngstown, Ohio. So thank you for uh, being a guest today. Oh, thank you for having me. Um, uh, appreciate you having me on and uh, bring back some memories. So it'll be good. Um, you know, we generally get started uh, trying to get a feel for the person and, uh, you know, his origins, his upbringing. Uh, you know, we're reaching outside of our usual confines of the city series, uh, Youngstown, inner city. So we're coming over to your side of the uh, dividing line, which is uh, Struthers, Ohio, which, you know, for those that are from that area, uh, we know that this is still territory. Uh, but uh, unlike Youngstown um, and some of the communities that surround Struthers, uh, Struthers has its own identity. So if you would, could you kind of tell us about, um, you know, that and your beginnings there, your family dynamic and background? Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, I grew up in Struthers, born and raised. Uh, my family father was from the uh, Struthers area. Uh, he went to high school there. Uh, then shortly after that, uh, my grandfather moved to Poland and then Canfield. So my uh, uncle's Graduated from Canfield, but my dad was from from Struthers, so we remained there. I grew up there. Uh, my mom's from uh, Liberty, but uh, you know the when you talk about uh, you know the city and, and Struthers, it's really the same to me. You know the way we grew up. Um, you know it was a steel mill city, uh, middle class. Uh, you know hard workers. Uh, football was. You know, on Friday night, everyone was here to watch football. It was a you know, football town. And, you know, that's kind of how I equate Youngstown in general. Um, you know, we played a lot of city schools, East, Rayan, uh, South, whether it was basketball or football. So we always had a connection there. But uh, to me, like that whole area, we kind of talked a little bit about it. Uh, Ron, you know, that football in that Northeast Ohio Youngstown area was, in, you know, when we played was kind of gritty and, and hard nosed, uh, you know, just a lot of tough little, not little, but tough kids playing, playing ball it was physical. Um, but that's kind of what Struthers was, you know, for me growing up, you know, a lot of us, uh, you know, it was a smaller city. So it's the same kids. We get up in the morning, go play, you know, football on the street or in the backyards and basketball. You know, I had a basketball hoop in my backyard. So kids would come over and we'd just, play pickup games all day, but that's kind of how I grew up in, in Struthers there. Were you, uh, you know, obviously talking about your success and, and, you know, where your career ended up, um, was that a goal that you had? Were you, uh, always involved in sports? Were you looking forward to playing for the Wildcats in high school? What was kind of your mentality, uh, coming up through? Yeah, I was always associated with sports. Um, football was later in, in for me. So when I was younger, I played soccer. Um, actually, we didn't have it in Struthers, but I played in Poland. Uh, baseball all the time because we could start at a young age. And I started basketball really young down at the Y uh, in Youngstown, uh, playing in in the basketball leagues there. Um, you know, so my parents took me there. But I didn't start football actually till seventh grade. So. Uh, my my size was my issue, you know, growing up, I was always taller and bigger, you know, and I would have been playing with much older kids, uh, playing little wildcats, you know, at a weight class, I would have been, been playing with a lot of older kids. So I kind of held out, but I always played football with all my friends that did play, you know, in the backyard and, and, uh, 
you know, that type of stuff. But uh, yeah, I was always in athletics. My dad was, you know, after when I was young, he played in uh, softball leagues in the Youngstown area. And uh, we had open kind of open gym basketball stuff. So he would take me on Friday nights and uh, we'd go up to uh, north side of Struthers um, to old school where they had a court and I'd go up there. They had a hoop and a on the stage. So I'd shoot hoops all the time while he was playing pickup games with the guys. And then in between his games, he would come up and shoot with me. So, yeah, we did that. I always, always affiliated with, with sports uh, growing up. What, um, what was kind of your view of high school football since you weren't playing? Um, did you start playing football in middle school? I'm, I'm, I'm sure it was the same thing with basketball. Was that when you first started, uh, putting on the gear and actually playing? Yeah. Yeah. For Struthers. I mean, uh, you know, going back to your first question, I always wanted to play football and basketball. I mean, that was just what, like I said, Struthers was a football town and, and, and still is. I mean, on Friday nights, the the stands we packed, people would be lined up on the fence to watch a football game. You know, my dad took me to him when I was young. Um, so I always wanted to, to play. So uh, yeah, eventually, you know, basically in seventh grade, I started basketball and, uh, and that's when I first started football as well. And, you know, that was my, you know, my dream at that age was to, to get on that field and play for, for Struthers in high school. So, you know, uh, transitioning into a sport like football, you know, I'm sure you may have had the same uh, trajectory playing the neighborhood football, a little bit of uh, rough and tumble and tackle before you get to the organized level, but, you know, um, I'm sure starting out in a sport like soccer, basketball, you know, you're getting that footwork and body control training. So, you know, if you can remember back uh, your first uh, forays into playing football with equipment on, you know, what, what was that like? Uh, how, how did you fare and how did you adapt and adjust to playing a, a game where some of your peers are starting at a much earlier age? Yeah, it was kind of tough at first. Um, I remember I, I played uh, tackle, so I was offensive tackle in seventh grade, and, and and part of it again was my size. You know, I was probably in seventh grade, six two, six three, uh, taller than most kids, bigger than most kids. So I, I played uh, tackle on offense, and then on defense, I was either an end or inside linebacker. Um, so I played that. It was it was kind of it was really different for me. Like I said, um, you mentioned most of the kids had already been playing you know, little league, uh, little wildcat stuff. So they're all comfortable with the equipment. It was, it was kind of awkward for me at first. And then in eighth grade, that's when Gary Zetz, um, he was friends with my father, um, just kind of knew me growing up, you know, playing baseball, bigger kid. I, I had a pretty decent arm and, uh, you know, reached out to my dad and said, why don't you tell Jim to, to play quarterback? So that's when I first started, uh, in eighth grade was uh, playing quarterback and that's kind of where it went from there. And then I had Gary through high school as well, working with me, uh, you know, freshman year and then into uh, junior and senior, sophomore, junior, senior year. So that's when I first got affiliated with, with quarterback. So then I was in a complete different change from being an offensive tackle, you know, trying to learn the plays and, you know, uh, working on mobility and coordination that way. Now, you know, um, being in that quarterback role uh, is is being in that leadership position. Is that um, something that you've always been pushed towards or groomed to be, or was that something that you had to kind of grow into and come to understand uh, as you progress being a quarterback? Yeah, it's a kind of interesting question for a talk with uh, Rich Lemon, who, who you had on the show, uh, you know, from Bucknell and Niles, but uh, we talked a little bit about you know, the leadership portion of it for me, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't that vocal guy, you know, I wasn't a kind of, you know, the, the cheerleader type leader, you know, I, I was more just kind of focused on my game and kind of tried to control the huddle, same thing in basketball, just kind of control, uh, you know, just the, from my actions more so than getting loud and, and being that type of vocal guy. Um, but it did help me out, uh, you know, in my career outside of football, kind of being in those roles where you have the pressure, you still have, uh, you know, to, to lead, set examples, 
you know, make sure people are in the right spots, all that, all that type of stuff. But yeah, I wasn't really a vocal leader. I was more kind of just wanted to do it through my game. You know, I, I, and that's a really good point. I think a lot of times um, the perception of leadership and, and knowing what you do for a living now, right. Managing facilities and, 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 and people um, it's, it's uh, sometimes the perception is that the leader always has to be telling people what to do or have that edge. Um, but I think long-term leadership is, is the execution developing and, you know, playing with a guy who he may not say much, but I know he's going to get it done. Yeah. And um, I think that, that speaks way more volumes than somebody who's just, just talking. Um, and, you know, you mentioned about a football town and the pressures and, um, you know, having been in Struthers for a number of years, you know, I, I can identify with, with what you're, you're talking about. How did you feel transitioning into that spot um, as the quarterback on Friday night? You know, I'm, I'm sure you were dealing with it on the basketball court too, from that standpoint, but how was that uh, experience for you and how did you navigate that? Um, yeah, it's an interesting question that, you know, even though basketball was big, football was, was the sport and, and Struthers. And, uh, you know, I talked my dad and we would go to, uh, you know, the Elmton or, or La Villa, which are, are a restaurant where a lot of the town people go and hang out and then you'd walk in there and, and they want to talk about football. What happened on Friday? Why'd you throw that pass? What'd you do that? You know, and you're sitting there getting questioned about, you know, the, the game and, and how you act your, you know, plays, how'd you react and, and, and different stuff. It's, it's kind of unique. It's, it's, uh, you know, everyone has their opinion and it, it's, you know, you always have that kind of couch quarterback that wants to tell you what, what you did wrong, but, uh, it's this, the stress is there regardless, but, uh, you know, the people are really good. Um, you know, again, my dad knows a lot of people there. So, you know, we, we'd sit and just talk, talk through it, but the, the pressure is that the expectation is you, you win, right. Even, even though we could be five and five, but the expectation was you, you should have been 10 and zero, right. That's a, what everyone expects to see. And, um, you know, so it's, there's a little bit of pressure. I, I felt it definitely in, in, uh, high school, you know, we, we had, uh, rivalries with Camel, with Poland and, you know, the expectation is that's the game. It's kind of like Ohio state Michigan, not to that level, obviously, but for us, it was, you know, you, you wanted to win that game. You wanted the bragging rates to, to say you, you beat a, you beat Camel this year, you beat Poland. And, you know, so there was always that pressure of those games that, you know, would lead up to that. And, you know, everyone would start talking about it and, and getting active in it. You know, it's funny you say that that was one of the things when I was thinking about um, talking to you, um, you know, I played in Ursuline Mooney. I've coached in Cheney Fitch. I coached in Struthers Camel. And, and I can say without a doubt, there is no heated rivalry that I've seen that compares to Struthers Camel. Yeah. I mean, it is, it is, you can, you can imagine it. You can hear about it. You can hear people talk about it. But when you're in that moment, like I, I'm telling you, I, I was it, it. It's impressive, and 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 I don't I don't the hatred in in in, in the competition, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, what was it like playing in those games for you? You know, year round, right? Football, basketball, baseball, everything. What what was that experience like for you? Yeah, it, it was exciting. I mean, uh, we we looked forward to it. Like you said, it was it was a rivalry. It was competitive. Um, you know, it, it was, it was hard, you know, you had two, two, uh, communities that are built exactly with that same type of, um, I don't know what the word would be, but, uh, you know, we were both that kind of steel, steel town, hard nosed kids that just came in and, and football was it. And, and you, like you said, we talked about that all year. That was the game last game of the season, regardless if it meant something or not, it was the game. Right. And, uh, you know, the stands, I remember when I was younger, we would go to the game and regardless of, 
of each other's record, when you went into that stadium, it was packed. I mean, the, the around the fence at Struthers would be people standing up. The stands would be packed. You know, when we were in uh, middle middle school, we'd all be in the stands with our jerseys on and, and guess who would sh- show up and sit right next to us, right? You'd have the camel and Struthers and we'd be bickering, you know, during the game. And that's just kind of, you know, how things were for us. But it it was, it was competitive. And, uh, you know, there were some great running backs that came from uh, Camel each year. We knew that coming in, um, you know, we had our, uh, you know, for us, defense was always like the physicality of it. We always wanted to bring it, you know, so it was always a great game. I always looked forward to it. But uh, like you said, there was a lot of a lot of pressure, too, because the expectation was you whoever won that game kind of had the, the bragging rates till till next year. You know, that that conference, uh, the old Mahoney Valley Conference, uh, you're really talking about a whole lot of great competition top to bottom, you know, and then you have the various success in sports, uh, different sports from school to school. So, you know, for those that may not remember or may not have ever been in the know for that younger generation, you know, we're talking about uh, Camel Poland, JFK, Gerard, yeah. uh, Canfield, you know, and then the personalities, the individuals during the time that uh, you would have been ascending. Um, you have great quarterbacks throughout the league, uh, tremendous running backs. Um, what were, what was the goal for you guys? Because I know in '91, you guys started out really hot. You know, had had a nice undefeated streak going there, and then midseason, there's uh, you know some changing of the guard between Gerard, uh, mm-hmm. you guys, and Camel. So could you uh, kind of go back to that 91 season and, you know, just kind of tell us some of your memories from that season, from that quarterback perspective? Yeah, I'm trying to think here, Ron. You put me on the spot. I think 91 would have been my uh, junior year, I believe, right? Yeah. Yeah, we had a really good team. That that senior team uh, in uh, junior high and freshmen uh, had undefeated or one last seasons. So we had a really high expectation that year to to do really well. Um, we had a really good core uh, personnel uh, on defense and offense. Um, in that year, I, it, you know, it's interesting what you what you mentioned about the the different schools and running backs. I mean, every year in in that in our conference, there was always a team that kind of just popped up. You, know, you want to talk about Gerard in '92? Um, they had Jerome. You know, at running back, you had Camel with Carlin Adams. You had all these different running backs. Uh, and, you know, there was more so, a, I would say we we did a little bit of passing, but we were mostly running as well. You know, it wasn't a lot of, like, now you see schools with one back, no back, throwing the ball all over the world. And, you know, we didn't really have that. We were just kind of an eye formation, wing formation, and we kind of just pounded it out. And a lot of the schools did that. I mean, Salem had a good quarterback coming out. Um, you know, obviously, uh, Poland and Canfield had, um, you know, some people, uh, there was a Fox that played quarterback as a freshman there. So they really good football coming out of, uh, that area. And so each year it was, to me, it was something different. It was always, there was always Camel Struthers, but you always had one of these other schools that just kind of popped up out of nowhere. Um, but that year we, we did well until we got about mid season, like you said, and, uh, we had a really, uh, uh, unfortunate loss to uh, JFK that kind of put us back. Um, I think we went into overtime and lost with them. Uh, beat Gerard, which was a big game for us because they were uh, doing well at that time. And then we ended the season, obviously, with with Camel. And uh, I think it was Carlin Adams put a show on you know, that game. I think he had 300 and some yards on us. Uh, <laughs> and and it, to, we're, next thing you know, we're down by a bunch and – you know, we came back and kind of made it a little bit competitive, but yeah, it was was an unfortunate year because expectation for us that year was to to do really well. Now, you know, uh, transitioning into that senior year of '92, uh, you know, you guys are coming off of a seven and three season, um, like you just said. You know, that endless line of great running backs out of Camel. Uh, you know, we're talking about the Sean Pattons, Toby Walkers, Carlin Adams. Uh, the Brandon Hamiltons, uh, just a, a a great cluster of talent 
right there in that small little city. And then, you know, you guys uh, are giving it your last go. Um, so could you talk about, you know, some of those personalities on your team, um, guys like Corey Strozier, Jeff Noon? Yeah, it was, uh, you know, that that year. So we had a lot of seniors our junior year, um, you know, from that team that was, uh, you know, pretty strong coming in. So we had a lot of changes. We also changed our offense up and went into more of a kind of spread, throw the ball a little bit more than we did the, the prior year. But uh, as you mentioned, uh, Corey Strozier was a, a great athlete uh, running back for us. We, we moved him to receiver uh, to try to get some speed on the outside. So we, we kind of lacked some speed uh, at the receiver standpoint. And, and then Jeff Noon went and played uh, tailback or he'd play receiver. Again, hard nose kid. I grew up with him. He, he lived a couple houses down the street. So we played football and basketball uh, together every single day. And uh, he was gritty. You know, and he he ran that way. He ran, you know, hard, and he ran like he was mad at the ground. You know, he would he would run it out. Same thing with Strozier was just fast and quick. You know, punt returns, kick returns. Um, those guys were also our defensive backs, which were key for us. You know, having that speed on the outside. But we did lose a lot of experience that that junior year that we had to kind of bring in some younger kids on the line and and receivers that didn't play receiver last year and kind of move some stuff around and change our offense up. So it was a learning experience for, for all of us. Um, uh, you know, and it, we, we kind of just moved the offense around and, and did a little bit quicker passes and stuff because of the line and kind of worked on some stuff to try to be more, uh, you know, competitive on the offense end. So I have a, I have a question for both of you guys, since both you guys played in the game, um, on, on some of the highlights we showed before, mm -hmm. you know, back in 92, you know, both of you guys touched on it, you know, football in this area specifically was, was barbaric, right? It was, it was three yards in a cloud of dust, impose your will on somebody who's going to break first. Um, you know, and then in those films, you know, you see, you know, you guys are lining up in, in trips, gun trips, um, you're doing things that I would think as a high school quarterback and receiver, I'd be pretty excited about, Yeah, you know, and, and making throws and, and doing some different routes, getting the ball downfield a little bit, hitting stuff across the middle. Um, you know, so there's that perspective. And then, you know, Ron on the flip side, I I'm assuming you guys didn't see much of that. You weren't preparing for, for for guys lining up in a shotgun at that point in time coming out i mean you'd get under center getting your trips and you'd run trap you know that that's yeah that was kind of the mo back and then so what was it like for you know you jim preparing to 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 get in and fling it and then for you ron that had to be a little exciting for you because i don't gotta you know tackle these tailbacks with the 20 yard head start at me all the time um <laughs> It, it had to be a, it had to be a, a, an exciting change. Yeah. For, for me, it was Dallas. I mean, it was, it was kind of like um, leading me into college, you know, cause a lot of kids at that time, you know, Ron and I kind of talked a little bit about it when we spoke on the phone, but you know, most of the teams in that area, again, were kind of the wing eye kind of formation and they kind of pounded it. And then you might do a little bit of play action, but you weren't really reading individual. So when you get into the college realm, you know, my freshman year, I was able to do a little bit of a reading of a, a defense or, you know, if the linebackers comes out, the slants in, you know, that kind of stuff, even though it was, you know, at a lower scale, it was prepping me for the future. And for me, it was exciting. I mean, I wanted to throw the ball. You know, we, we talked about, I'm not, I'm not a runner by no means, and nor did I want to be, <laughs> I wanted to get back there and sling it. So, you know, my junior year, we, we had a, a solid defense and, and we had a good, good offense running back. So we would kind of do a lo lot more running my junior year. So the senior year where we kind of opened it up, it was exciting for me, you know, and it was, you know, we, we were throwing the ball a little bit more. There's games that we still just lined up in the eye and pounded on the thing against Poland my senior year. I think I threw five times or something and we just ran the ball the entire game. But 
it was whatever they gave us or whatever the play was, but it was exciting to see that. And a lot of teams weren't prepped and ready. Like you said, I mean, it's a little bit different offense than most teams are going to see. You're not, you, you're going to see one out of 10 games where you're going to have someone in that kind of spread. Uh, you know, I, I can remember um, Struthers week uh, specifically uh, our senior year, you know, we're, we're a basic 40 read team, uh, three defensive backs uh, are, our only coverage at the time was uh, 3D, you know, and our philosophy was uh, three back pedals turn and, and run and stay deep is the deepest. So uh, I remember our D coordinator, uh, Mike Popio, you know, we we're doing our uh, film review and uh, strategizing all week long, uh, getting prepared uh, for what the scout team is going to give us as a look. And the, the one thing about you, compared to other guys uh, in the area at the time is, you know, you got this great size, uh, 6'6", uh, 210, 215 pounds. And then you see how strong your arm is. If you uh, look at the clips, uh, you got a high school guy in 1992 hitting the deep out 20 yards downfield. Like, <laughs> you know, it was yeah. just a, a little swing pass. So, for me, you know, we were told all week, uh, you know, Fox is never going to run. He's, he's going to stay in the pocket. He's going to sit back there and he's going to sling it. So uh, there's a piece of uh, that clip there where you do take off and run. And I, I come off of my responsibility after you cross the line of scrimmage. And I, I told you over the phone, you know, that's an imposing visual to see a guy 6'6", with a head of steam and you know you're 160 pounds at best you just have no idea what's going to be on the other side of that collision but looking back uh at what you guys were doing and attempting to do versus what we were lined up in and having had that experience uh you know in a higher level of football a different level of strategy and understanding you know how that's supposed to match you know um where we're misaligned in all kind of situations. So there's weaknesses in our defense that, you know, we just don't have the uh, coaching, the finer points of football at that age and that time to know how to take advantage of one thing versus another. So really it just comes down to being fundamental, being tough, mm -hmm. trying to make uh, as little mistakes as you possibly can. And then, you know, when it comes to that game specifically, you know, we had a good two year run of success, two back to back nine and one seasons. But when I look back over that that game, you know, our teams were mirror images of each other, you know, from the line to the skills uh, to the mentality of the quarterback. So we we end up having a dog fight 1917 game. Yeah. And I think the only reason why it wasn't you guys to give us the loss was it, you just ran out of time on the clock because that last uh, half of the fourth quarter, you know, you guys had momentum and were really, you know, doing what you wanted uh, and figuring us out. So I appreciate that uh, someone came up with the idea to, to make a, a game in that 48 minutes in high school because it preserved the <laughs> win for us that year. Yeah. Yeah, but it, uh, going to that, that, you know, even, even for us going against teams, it was sometimes difficult because it, you weren't sure how they were going to try to defend that, you know, yeah. and you're trying to work with, with, uh, you know, receivers to try to understand you know, cuts and reads, running backs, who to block. You know, there was times I'd get up to the line and I had, you know, two plays. So I'd, I'd be able to look at the um, slot receivers, look at the defense, and then I could audible and do a running play to Jeff Noon and, and run out a, you know, single back ISO. Well, it wouldn't be an ISO, but a single back, you know, running play to the short side or, or whatever I wanted. So I had a little bit of flexibility as well, which, you know, in, co in high school, most quarterbacks aren't doing that, right? You're not given the freedom to to make decisions and and call audibles. Where you know my senior year, I was able to to do some of that. So I'd go in, kind of read the defense. You know, the eight in a box, I'm throwing it. If you're spreading out, I'm running it. You know, and we we had sometimes two plays going into the huddle and into the line. So 
that was unique. And that also helped leverage, you know, my uh, uh, kind of IQ, football IQ in the into my first freshman year of college, right? I'm already kind of reading defenses at a lower level, but, you know, a lot of kids that I came in, we had eight quarterbacks when I came in my freshman year at Bucknell. And some of them, you know, might not have been able to read defenses like that or had that opportunity. You know, it was always, you just ran to play, whatever I call, run it, you know? So that was kind of a, you know, for me was exciting as well to have that kind of you know, freedom and the responsibility of, of a audible and out of a play. Yeah. And I think that's a testament to, you know, I think, I, I don't, I don't know who was calling the offense at that time. It kind of, from what you're saying, it sounds like Zets was probably heavily involved. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was calling it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, with him having that, that knowledge and a little bit of gunslinger, uh, you know, taking those risks and the confidence in you, you know, to be able to do it. I think that's, and, and, and that's sometimes, like you said, you know, that's a difference in games. Why do you, why do you do di- things differently than, than, um, than other teams? So you get that competitive edge, yeah. you know, it, it, at that point, it's like, you know, who can coach Dave better, you yeah. know? And, and yeah. I mean, that's, it's, so I, I think that's, that's the uniqueness of it. And, and it does, it, it brings some excitement to kids, you know, and it, it, uh, gets, um, you get a little bit of an edge, even if it's a two, 2% improvement, you know what I mean? Like you just get that edge, make it a little bit more exciting. So it was definitely, definitely more exciting, uh, you know, for me. And I think for some of the players, you know, like I said, it, a lot of the schools you played, it was the same thing. You'd run the ball 40 40 times a game. So we were throwing maybe half of that, you know, we're, we're doing stuff that's, you know, not what normally what you see, Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, whether it's screen passes or trick plays, you know, hook and laterals, we ran those like, you know, so we, we had opportunities uh, to do some different things uh, out of those formations that, you know, uh, I wouldn't say it was boring, but sometimes you just get the same thing. Guys just, you play a team and it would be running every play and you just see who, whose head could hit harder. You right. Know, just pound it out. So it, it was, it was good for us to get. And for me, it was exciting. I mean, like I said, I wanted to throw the ball. So when you got in those formations and, you know, we, we had some flexibility to throw different things uh, was, was an exciting time for us. And probably like you said, one of the schools in the area that was probably doing stuff a little bit different at that time. Uh, you know, most of the Ron and I were talking about it. I mean, everyone kind of in the Youngstown area played the same type of football. You you had a good defense and you you ran the ball and you just that's what you did for that four quarters, man. Just pounded at each other and see who came out at the end. You know, it's a it's a land war. Let me ask you this: how did how did basketball, your experience in basketball, translate to the passing game, right? was there a connection there as a quarterback and, 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 in the, the basketball floor and spacing? Yeah, there was a little bit, you know, um, when I played uh, basketball, I kind of had the opportunity to play multiple positions. So because of my height, I was always kind of underneath, but there was a lot of times I was, you know, kind of playing a guard position or, you know, kind of that three position. Um, it always helped to have that, uh, kind of visibility to in, on the court to kind of see who was open and, and kind of read things a little bit different. So it gave me a, a little different view of things. I kind of equate that basketball with playing quarterback, you know, kind of seeing where people are at. Um, I, didn't, I didn't do a lot of it. Like I said, I was kind of isolated to some areas, but it did. There was some carryover for sure. You know, when, when you're a guy that, uh, really never gets a, a break throughout the year because you play so many sports, uh, because you're relied on to do so many things and carry your teams um, and, and trying to be successful. You know, football-wise, you you quarterback, punt, place kick, uh, basketball. We're talking about the 90s where it's really a, a post-first, uh, perimeter-second type game. But you're you're doing things like stepping out as a, a six seven point forward, if you will, and shooting threes at that time. Um, you know, what what are some of the drivers in your life, and you know, 
the upbringing and the influence of your father that allows you to be that multi talented guy at your size. You know, um, I think sometimes uh, in our era, a guy uh, your height would have been pigeonholed into doing one dimensional things, but you kind of break the mold for our time period. Yeah, that's a, uh, you know, growing up, I, I think part of it was, um, you know, football was unique for me because I started later, but basketball, um, you know, I started at a young age and um, again, I started at the Y plan and a lot of it was I, I could dribble and do some different stuff. So I, I was able to put myself in positions, um, you know, bringing the ball up, like you mentioned, or, or shooting outside. And, and a lot of it is I, I played, you know, ball with the kids on the street, but my dad was always shooting hoops with me um, and, and practicing, um, you know, outside shots and stuff. So I, I got comfortable in those areas. Sometimes, you know, a bigger kid doesn't, you know, nowadays it's, you know, they're shooting all over the place, but, you know, back then, like you mentioned, uh, you kind of were pigeonholed, but I think that development growing up and just being able to, uh, you know, work on shooting outside dribbling kind of allowed me to get in that position where I could do, do some different things, you know, even in junior high and stuff, I was bringing the ball up or I was playing guard, even though I was, you know, six, three or whatever, and probably one of the tallest kids in the, in the area, but, you know, just doing that stuff uh, with my father, uh, you know, with the kids always, you know, pretending to to be Michael Jordan or something outside in the in the driveway was kind of what we did. And, you know, that, I think that all translated over. And then in, in football, just my development, um, you know, was kind of really Gary Zetz for me, um, you know, working with me. So in the summers and stuff, I, I'd work with them when I went into college. Uh, I came home for the the summer breaks and I, I would go to work, work out, and then he would come out and we'd, we'd throw hundreds of passes on the field every day. So that development, you know, was just working with individuals that you know, probably seen the potential of, uh, uh, you know, within me, I had, you know, obviously some athletic ability to, to do some stuff, but, you know, at times it probably needed to be pulled out. And I think those things kind of happened, you know, naturally with, you know, either my father or someone like Gary kind of seeing what I could do. Now, you know, uh, when we talk about that hard nosed steel town mentality of a uh, area like Struthers, um, you know, big ball boxing culture, football culture, uh, baseball culture, uh, ethnic enclave between uh, Struthers and Camel. Uh, you know, when you transition over to uh, Bucknell and you're over there in Lewiston, PA, you know, what what is that transition leaving the comforts of home and the familiarity of the Mahoning Valley, you know, what is your adaptation to uh, university life and the beginning parts of playing football um, in an area like that? Yeah, for me, it was really uh, eye opening. <clears throat> it's kind of my first time, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, uh, you know, being outside of the, like you said, the city and home and you know, it wasn't far away, about four and four, four and a half hour drive, but uh, far enough to be away. And it, it for me, it was a, a whole new change. You know, there it was uncomfortable. I, you know, I came in, you're, you're meeting new guys. Um, competition's always there. I, you know, I talk with people all the time and they talk about, uh, you know, transitioning levels of sports, you know, high school, college, college pros. And I say, you know, when you get from high school to college, everybody's Jim Fox at high school and college level, right? Everyone's the, the better player on their team, right? So the competition is more competitive. And then when you go to the next level, you're like even down to, you know, below percent of total athletes. So, you know, coming in, there was eight quarterbacks. It was stressful for me. And, and there's things I focused on. One was, uh, uh, you know, I studied the playbook like crazy. I wanted to know what everyone was doing. I, I had to get some advantage over, uh, you know, other individuals, um, you know, we, we joked around about it. I'm, I'm not the fastest guy and, and it's not what I wanted to do. So I had a strong arm and I could do a little reading of defenses coming out of high school. So I took that, you know, as my strengths and said, I'm going to continue to, to work on that. And then I wanted to know the plays. I want to know who was blocking, what defense, where you were blocking, what reads there were. So I just focused on studying the playbook, uh, my freshman year, but it was definitely, a uh, 
a big transition for me and difficult at first, you know, being away from home and, you know, now you're in the kind of the stresses of trying to figure out how you're going to fit into this new organization. And, and then on top of it, school. If I could circle back to that transition real quick, <clears throat> um, you know, having a high level of success in both basketball and football, was there, was there ever a thought um, of, of you doing basketball? Were there options there? And, and if there was, why did you choose football? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Let's, I was talking with a uh, rich a little bit. I, I went and visited them this weekend in, in Atlanta and uh, we we're talking a little bit about basketball. And, and one of the things for me was, uh, in hindsight, I, I might have played basketball if I had to, to choose again. I, I really love basketball. Um, you know, at the time, I felt I could do more with football, maybe. And on top of it, the decision of making a decision of, of, of signing, uh, you know, occurs before the basketball season, um, you yeah. know, and I made that decision to, to play football. Um, you know, when I went to college at Bucknell, I thought about, could I do both? And I, I went into uh, engineering uh, as my degree in the, you know, I had a five-year program in a four-year window. So they didn't redshirt at, at Bucknell. Um, it was non-scholarship. So you, you had to get in, I had to get my education. And that for me was the most important thing. You know, football, got me in a position to be successful where I am now. Uh, would I love to continue to play? Absolutely. But, you know, the big point for me was an emphasis from my family was getting my education and get my degree and, and uh, leveraging that. Um, so with, with the amount of school I had and the amount of, uh, you know, football studying and working out, I, I just didn't know if, if I could do both, you know, and, and be successful in the academic realm. So I just decided to, you know, maintain my football, but, I did have thoughts of trying to play both, um, you know, at the college level, it just, uh, you know, I just wanted to focus academically, but in hindsight, I, I would have really loved to play football or basketball and continue that. Yeah. And those highlights throwing some dimes though. There was a great, uh, great throw in the back of the end zone. Great catch by, uh, by that receiver. I mean, so it obviously it, it worked out and, uh, you know, you've accomplished a lot. Um, athletically professionally um so it's all paid off but you know those are always tough decisions for yeah. kids to make um you know and, and they're critical but uh the portal now offers some opportunities with with uh changes and in, in choices so yeah it definitely makes it you know for me you know makes uh makes it more difficult I, you know I'm, I'm not a big fan of the portal you know, the commitment to the team and the organization is not there. People are just flipping and flopping, but it also makes it difficult to plan for the next year, you know, as you're probably prepping, the, you know, within conferences to understand who's going to be the quarterback, who's going to be the running back. Yeah. You know, people are just kind of moving around. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, th at that time, we didn't have those, you know, that flexibility. If you kind of moved and, and did something, you'd have to sit out a year unless you dropped down a division or, or something. So there was a, a little less flexibility. Um, but it is a big decision. Like you said, Dallas, for people to, for a young, you know, a boy, young girl to come in and, and decide, well, what do you want to do? You know, if you have a multi-sport or, you know, what, which way you want to go, which school do you want to go? I mean, there's opportunities to, you know, play different divisions. I mean, obviously I wanted to try to play division one, um, you know, and I had some, you know, uh, opportunities in the basketball. Um, but I, you know, obviously went the Buck Bucknell route and went, went football. So worked out for me. I mean, I got a great education. Bucknell is a great school. Got to continue to play a sport that I love as well. So it was, it was good. Um, you know, uh, what you're doing now in, in the field of, uh, mechanical engineering, you know, what, what is that, that drove you towards that, uh, major. Um, can you talk a little bit about the rigor of that program coming out of Bucknell? And then, you know, what aspects of being an athlete, football, whether it be football, basketball, baseball, um, you know, some of the 
foundational things that you learn through sport uh, helps you in your everyday life and your job and uh, what you do as a facilities manager? Yeah, you know, when I went to Bucknell, like I said, we, I had a four year, four years to figure out what I wanted to do in my life. So it was, you know, getting into there, I, I enjoyed math and, and that kind of stuff, math, physics, science kind of stuff. So I decided to take a course, just a general engineering course my freshman year, just to kind of see uh, if that was what I wanted to do. And at that point, the, the course went well. I decided to go the mechanical route. Uh, like I said, it's kind of like a five-year program in a four-year. You know, I had to crunch. I had a lot of classes. You know, we always talk about, um, you know, at Bucknell, it's a, a very academic school. So academics for them is almost more important than football, right? And I, I, I'm not saying every school is like that, but I'm sure at some bigger schools, you know, football takes precedence over academics. But, um, you know, I had that that course, I had classes from eight in the morning till three in the evening. I worked out in the morning. I watched film at lunch. I had practice in the evening and I did my homework. You know, that was kind of my uh, regiment, you know, through throughout college. Um, you know, once I got my degree, um, I went in and started working in the engineering. And here in the last probably uh, 20 years, I got into management, 15 years or so. But sports really leveraged me to that. And it goes back to that. Um, you know, being a leader. So again, I wasn't very vocal. I just kind of was uh, more led by example, but part of sports, which helped me out in, in my uh, career was understanding the stresses and to be able to handle it. Right? Some people, you know, at work, you have stresses a little bit different, but, you know, some people get real flighty and, you know, kind of get excited and loud and, and stuff. I just kind of was calm and, and just kind of absorbed it. And then I tried to figure out how do you move to the next step, right? And it's very similar. If you were a quarterback, you can't be getting emotional all the time. I mean, you could have emotions, but you can't get caught up in, you know, in everything or you're, you're not going to perform real well. So mm -hmm. that really helped me out into my, my career and my personal life. You know, I, I kind of do the same same with my children and, and kind of work and be calm with them and, and kind of help them out and understand how do you, how do you improve and move to the next, next level of something or work through something. So sports definitely uh, is a big part of who I am and, and what I've become. Yeah. And I, I think that's so key with, uh, with today um, resiliency or lack thereof with, with um, some of our kids and the expectation of, of, uh, of sports. I think we were all blessed to have good coaches that could, uh, in whatever form or fashion it is, you know, coach you up, right? Tell you when yeah. you're doing great, tell you when you're not, and then give you that path forward. Um, you know, good examples, and I think that um, sometimes we, we lose that aspect um, and to your point, it's not about going to be a professional athlete. It's about going, going to be a man, a father, um, and, and, yeah. and hopefully embedding that in our kids. Yeah, I think it's key. You know, um, I'm a big Ted Lasso fan. I don't know if you guys watch that. Um, yeah. if, you, if you don't, I would definitely watch it, but you know, it's, it's, it's unique when he talks about, uh, you know, it's not about winning or losing, you know, he talks about, you know, helping each person become a better person right and and it's kind of unique because at the time you don't think about it you know when i played ball i i wanted to win you know i still do but you know i had a great coach um you know gary zetz was very uh, uh key in, in my development not only as a football player but but you know as a man you know he taught me some stuff things i did wrong you know in high school you're you're immature. You do, do things, you know, on the field, off the field that, you know, um, you know, just need, need someone to intervene or have a conversation. And I had Tom Gadd at Bucknell, who was a great coach and, uh, you know, he instilled, um, more importantly, you being a man and, and how he wanted you to act within the community, within the school, you know, with recruits, and that was really key for me to have those individuals, um, you know, 
being there to, to support you and coach you on not just football, but life. And I, I think those type of experiences for me are key on, you know, what I've become as a, as a man and uh, is an invaluable part of athletics that, that people don't understand, right? Everyone thinks it's the glory of touchdowns and baskets or whatever, but there's so much more that, you know, probably all three of us have, have got out of athletics that, you know, develops you as a, as a person and, and, you know, as a man. So to me, that was probably one of the biggest things I didn't realize was occurring, but occurred, you know, and then I realized after I got out of school, I'm like, wow, this is some valuable lessons of life that you learn. You know, uh, on that note, uh, you kind of summing up and thinking about your memories, uh, your successes, your reasons and your why. Um, if you had that one more down to go back <laughs> and uh, repeat, um, and this is, you know, reflective, philosophical on the field, off the field, um, you know, if you had that one more down, uh, what would be the scenario? Who would you be with? Uh, could you set that up for us? Yeah, I was I was talking with uh, it was interesting. We Rich and I were back at a game at Bucknell uh, this year, and uh, we were on the sidelines watching the game, and um, uh, we were talking about w would you go in right now? You know, we were watching Bucknell, and I was like, if they came over right now with a helmet and asked me to go out there, I would jump out there. Rich is like, I don't think I would. I was like, I, I would go one more time. You know, I said I, I still think I could sling it one more time. Cause you, you watch like offenses now and uh, you know, they were kind of one back shotgun and they're, they're throwing the ball. They're doing a little bit of kind of the, you know, read option type stuff. And uh, for me, I was like, I would just love to go out there and, and sling it one more time. Um, you know, probably my greatest memory is that uh, championship game at, at Bucknell my senior year. So we're playing in our last game uh, against Colgate. And whoever won that game won the league. And we went into uh, overtime and and won by one point. And uh, I kind of replay that in, in my mind. And you know that I I would play with those group of guys again, those seniors that I played with. You know, we came in with 40, 50 seniors or something. We left with 12. So it was a group of us that that stuck it out. You know, busted busted our butts for four years. You know, made it through. And on the last game of the season, last game of your college career, you, you win the league championship. So, um, you know, I would play with them again. Now, obviously, I would love to play with uh, other players. and But um, to experience that whole thing again, uh, I, I would do it in a second. I uh, appreciate uh, you giving me a little bit of time to uh, take me on to that uh, side of Struthers. And then, you know, give some insight into your career and your mentality as a not only an athlete, but as a person and an individual and your approach. I, I think the, the type of foundation that was laid out before you is a big reason why you're so successful, so committed and, uh, you know, really grounded and rooted and loyal to what you do even in your professional life so i thank you for coming on and being a guest today uh hopefully uh, we can get you and lemon on here and you guys can kind of pontificate about uh what is patriot league football and uh who is the more famous guy <laughs> <laughs> you already know that answer he'll, he'll tell you a hundred times <laughs> But thank you. I appreciate you, Jim. Uh, no, I appreciate you guys having me on. Uh, you know, I, it, it's a, a great opportunity to to discuss and and kind of look back at, uh, you know, my career and and also you know looking at the old clips kind of bring back a lot of memories. I think what you guys are doing is a a really good thing for the area, you know, and uh, hopefully you continue to go outside of the city series. And I think there's a lot of good. Uh, players at a you know a lot of good schools to kind of open up and and bring that out and kind of see you know what Youngstown's really about you know when I talk about where I grew up I I reference Youngstown right it's it's that area um, you know and it's I, I think what you guys are doing is a, a really good thing and I appreciate your time and having me on to talk and I would love to 
get on with Rich and talk about Bucknell. You know, it'd be good to kind of go through some of that with him as well. Yeah, thanks, man. Appreciate you coming on and taking the time. It's it's uh, good to good to hear your perspective and and uh, you know being around Struthers, I've always heard the name. So nice to meet you and and uh, you know great time sitting here listening to you. So thank you. Yes, same, Dallas. I appreciate your time.